Uh, this month we have been talking about stewardship and our senior pastor and assistant pastor have taught as well over the last um, two weeks and uh, I hope that we'll be able to learn more um, through what the Lord has laid in my heart today. Um, stewardship is uh, defined as the act of taking care of or managing something that we have. And I think that's a very simple definition uh, that should send a message across to us. So everything that we have or anything that we have, when we are taking care of it, we are being a steward. Let's make a distinction before we go any further that we are stewards, God has made us stewards and not we are not the owners of the things that we have. Praise the Lord. Can I repeat that please? We are stewards, we are not the owners. So everything that we have, everything that we possess, uh, the money, the assets, our talents, our knowledge, our certificates, um, you know, qualifications, positions, everything that we possess, we are only stewards of it. It all belongs to God. He is the boss. Praise the Lord. So let's not, uh, you know, um, dwell on that, that I have this or I have that. It is not your doing. It is God who has provided that to you. You may have worked hard, but it is God who has provided that to you. And if it was not in his will, then you would not have those things that you have. And we should be grateful to God that he is the boss. We are just stewards of the things that he has given to us. In First Timothy chapter 6, verse 7, we read that we have brought nothing into this world. And we cannot take anything out of this world. So we have come empty-handed. We are leaving empty-handed when our time comes. Everything that we have at this moment has been given to us by the Lord. Matthew chapter 6, 21, Jesus is saying, For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. So let's not dwell on the assets and the things and the possessions that we have so that our heart is not here, but it is in the kingdom of the Lord where we should be building and laying up treasures for us. So last two weeks, we have talked about being good stewards in our possessions, in the assets that we have, in abilities and talents and gifts. Today, I'd like to uh, bring to your attention that God has placed us in, in responsibilities, in positions, in places where we have people that we are working with. And I want to draw your attention that God also requires us to be good stewards when we are looking after people, when we are managing people. Most of us who are sitting in this place, we are leaders in one way or another. We have our senior pastor who looks after the whole church. God has given him that, that responsibility and that role. He manages the church. He manages the board of deacons. He manages the pastors. He manages the HODs and the area ministers. So not only does he manage the assets of the church, the ministries of the church, the things that we have, he manages the people as well. And we thank God that he has been a good steward to all of us. And through him, God has used him to manage so many people. At the same time, he has blessed so many people as well. In the same way, those of you who are here, area ministers and pastors and HODs, God has placed you in a, in a place of responsibility. Those, we have Sister Edith, for example, who's a Sunday school superintendent. She's responsible for the Sunday school teachers. The Sunday school teachers have been placed in a, in a responsibility where they're responsible for the children that they are teaching. In the same way, all of us, in one way or another, we are responsible for some people. And God has given us that role to look after them. Maybe you don't have a position and title. If you are a parent, that's a wonderful responsibility that God has given to you. You're looking after your home, your family, your children. Students who are studying in school, God has also placed you in a, in a, in a position where you're responsible for, for people. Um, I believe Princess is the head girl of the school. She manages all the prefects, praise the Lord. So it's, even though she's so young, she's in a place of responsibility. And God requires us to be good stewards in the places where we are. In the same way, if your child is a prefect in the school, he's in a place of responsibility. Even if he or she doesn't have a position, children look up to them. They're also responsible. So wherever we are, there are people who are working with us, around us, who look up to us. And God is requiring us to be good stewards of the people that are with us. So my focus or our focus today will be being good stewards for the people who are with us. You know, if you look at the outside workplaces, uh, statistics suggest it is said that 
People quit, do not quit jobs, they quit managers or bad managers. Many people leave their workplace not because the workplace was not good for them, it is because the person who was responsible for them was not a good manager. And in the same way that can be applicable to us as stewards in the kingdom of God, we need to be good stewards so that we draw people in and not drive them out of the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. So we'll look at 10 things that will make us good stewards or good managers of, of the people that has been entrusted to us. Number one, the first and foremost thing is we must know and accept that we are stewards of God and not any man. I'll say that again. We must know and we must accept the fact that we are God's stewards and we are not of any man's. We don't report to any man. We may report in line of hierarchy, but we are there in the business of the kingdom of God and he is the boss and we should only do things to please him and him alone. Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 says, Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. So we are not serving men. Let's not do anything to please men. Let's always have that aim in our hearts that we are here to please God in the things that we do. Let's ask ourselves, have we been good stewards so far? For God, or have we been doing things to please men? Have we managing people, our teams, the people are working with us and, and you know, making them work towards something where we will get the praise and glory? We should be managing people to please God and not please any man. Whatever you do, Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 to 24 says, Work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Jesus Christ. That should be our target. At the end, God will give us the reward, the inheritance that he has for us. So number one was, know and accept that you are the Lord's steward and not any man's. Number two, live above reproach. Let's live a life that nobody can point a finger at us and say that we are not living as per the Lord's command. We hear this verse often from Titus chapter 1, verses 7 to 8, whenever we are doing the ordination service and installation of leaders, we hear of the similar um, command of the Lord. But let's just read that, and I believe it's still applicable to all of us who are in a, in a place of responsibility. Titus chapter 1, verse 7 to 8 says, For an overseer as God's steward must be above reproach he must not be arrogant or quick-tempered or a drunkard or violent or greedy for gain, but hospitable, a lover of good, self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. Praise the Lord. That's how we should be, above reproach, so that nobody can lift a finger and, and point to us and say, we are doing this or that as good stewards in the kingdom of God. We must also keep in mind that when we are in a position of responsibility, we are influencing people. So let's be a good influence. People look, to, look up to us and we should be accountable for the things that we are doing. Let's ask ourselves today, are we influencing people to become closer to God or are we pulling them away from the Lord? Paul says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, and, and he says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not confirmed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That should be how we should be living our lives. Above reproach, not confirmed to the world, not living in the patterns of the world, but changed and transformed by the renewing of our mind through the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's ask ourselves, have we been transformed from our former life into the new life that Jesus has given to us? Or there are still fragments of, of our past life that we are carrying? Because the Lord wants us that if we shall you know, um, influence any weak amongst us to do, go away from the Lord, then there will be severe judgment on ourselves. So let's be careful. We don't want to be responsible to lead anyone away from the Lord. Point number three, let's serve others and not be the boss. As stewards, it's our responsibility to serve others. We should demonstrate that. We should show that in our lives. 
we are not only here to give instructions and directions, we are here to lead by example. So let's serve. Many times, you know, um, people in position and power, pride starts to come in. And over the years and over time, we may start forgetting this. But as stewards of the Lord, we should be the ones serving with our people and not just giving directions. I'll give you an example. If you're an area minister and if you come for your church cleaning and you come and sit in the front bench and you delegate, you brother, you clean the bench, you sweep, you mop, you go and clean the toilets and you sit there a whole one or two hours and you do nothing. You're not being a good steward in the kingdom of God. You should be serving with your people. In fact, you should be the first one to go to the washroom and start cleaning the toilet because the serving and humbleness begins from there. Praise the Lord. And when people will see you, they will know that you are a leader, you are a steward that walks with them and pulls along with them and not just there to command people to do things. So we should serve others and not be the boss because the boss is the Lord. Jesus himself said, whoever wants to be the greatest must be the servant of all. So let's keep that in our minds as we lead people, as we manage people. Humility is the fear of the Lord, Proverbs chapter 22, verse 4 says. Its wages are riches and honor and life. Let's start being humble. It has been my greatest fear. I always have that fear. And I pray to the Lord that, Lord, show me whenever the pride starts to creep in. Because I know that will become the downfall of me. When we let pride come in, once you start having... You know, you start studying, you have qualifications, you have positions and titles and roles and responsibilities, pride starts to come in. And we should be very careful in that. Because once that starts to come in, then that's where the devil starts to attack the leaders. And very, very soon, that will see your fall and your downfall. All of us, we should strive to be humble in whatever positions and responsibilities we find ourselves in and serve others. Number four, practice what you preach. So it's linked to the previous one. We cannot keep telling people and do things ourselves. We tell people, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. But if we ourselves end up doing it, then we are not practicing what we are preaching. In fact, we are hypocrites by the definition that Jesus has given to us. At the same time, you know, good things that we tell our people to do, pray every day, then we should be praying every day ourselves. Read the Bible, if you're saying half an hour, we should be praying more than half an hour every day. Otherwise, we don't have any right to tell our people to do that. If we tell them to go and preach the gospel, we should be ready to do the same as well. Go along with them and do the same. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Titus chapter 2 verse 7 says, Show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works. And in your teaching, show integrity and dignity. So even when nobody is looking, you are still following what you are teaching others to do. So be a person of integrity. Point number five, be faithful and trustworthy steward till the very end. Now we have heard of trustworthy and faithfulness so many times, but I want to draw your attention to the bit where I'm saying, or God is saying to the end. Because many times we are very faithful when we are giving responsibilities. In the first few months, we are very faithful. Next few months, the faithfulness starts to diminish. And later, towards the end of the year, it may be completely gone. And I think we see that often in our church here as well. And I think it's all across everywhere. People, when, they, when we start in a position of responsibility and a role, we are filled with fire and zeal and we keep doing the work of the Lord and slowly it dies down. But it should not be so. We should be faithful and we should be trustworthy until the very end, until we have finished our race here on the earth. Luke 16.10 says, One who is faithful in very little is also faithful in much. And one who is dishonest in very little is also dishonest in much. You have been entrusted with responsibilities, with roles. You should faithfully do what God has entrusted you to do. In Luke chapter 12, verses 42 onwards, or before that as well, Jesus is sharing a parable with his disciples. And I'll just read from 42 to 46. He says, Jesus is saying, and the Lord said, who then is the faithful and wise manager whom his master will set over his household to give them their portion of food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. 
But if that servant says to himself, my, my master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the male and female servants and to eat and drink and get drunk, the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him at an hour he does not know and will cut him in pieces and put him with the unfaithful. Be trustworthy and faithful until the end. Don't give up in the middle. Don't start becoming incompetent manager. Don't start becoming unfaithful manager. Don't start becoming untrustworthy. Keep running the race until the Lord calls us home or until our time comes. Praise the Lord. He has entrusted us and we should keep running the race and be, be good stewards in the kingdom of God. So let's review what we have learned so far. We have talked about five things. The first one was, know and accept that you are the Lord's servant or steward and not any man's. You must live a life that is above reproach. You must be willing to serve with others and not be the boss. You must lead by an example and practice what you preach. And point number five that we've just seen, you must be faithful and trustworthy until the very end. I'd like to make another five points very quickly. The sixth point, a good steward of people will be a just steward. The word just is being impartial. There's no favoritism. You're providing to each as one needs. You're not distributing equally, but you're providing to each as one needs. That's being just. That's what God does. I think there was an analogy that I read um, some time back, and if I can remember it correctly. Um, there was an analogy about a, a parent who had a few children, and he was distributing cookies. And uh, the parent gave you know, the older one two, and the middle one one, and the smaller one um, half. And there was another one where he gave only a small portion of the cookie. And he did not distribute equally. Why? Because the one that received the smallest portion had diabetes. So he only gave what was required or what was safe for that person. So he's not being equal, but he's being just. He's giving to the person that is, you know, that what he or she needs. And that's how we should be as stewards in the kingdom of God. We should be just, just like the Lord gives. The Lord gives to us as we need, as much as we can handle. You know, that's good things and bad things, difficulties that we go through. God allows it to happen in our eyes as much as we can handle. He knows all of us and he is a just God. In the same way, we may not be him, but we should try to be just. And there should not be any form of any favoritism when we serve and lead people. Prophet Micah says, what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, love, mercy, and walk humbly before God? Let's try to do that in our lives. Point number seven, love and do good to others. That principle, Jesus has taught so, so nicely to all of us. And over and over again, we hear of this. He says, this is my commandment, John chapter 15, verse 12 to 13. That you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friend. As stewards of God's people, we must love the people. And we must do good for them. Do not hold, withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in the power of your hands to do so. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 27. So when you're in a position of responsibility, you're managing people, when it is in your power to do good, please be sure to do good and love your people. Point number eight. Let's be good stewards of our time. When we are managing people, we should be able to manage our time as well. Time and tide waits for no one. We all know that very well. So let's be good managers of our time as well. We should make use of the time. Make sure we are spending time with the Lord. We are working towards his kingdom. We are spending time with the people that we are supposed to be spending time with. Let's be good managers of our time. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15 says and 16. See then that you walk as wise, not as fools, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Point number nine. Let's not seek our own glory, but the glory of our master. Whatever we do, whatever God has entrusted us with, whatever we use and manage, in everything that we have success in, all glory should go to God and God alone. Not to any human being. 
Colossians chapter 3 verse 17 teaches us this. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Praise the Lord. Uh, we learn so much from John the Baptist. You know, when he was there before Jesus, he was preparing the way. People were coming in great numbers. They were getting baptized. And he had a lot of disciples and followers. But when Jesus came, the focus was starting to shift on Jesus. And many people had come to him and, and you know, probably tried to provoke him. But he kept saying that Jesus must increase and I must decrease. Because he knew the will of the Father. And he knew that Jesus was the Son of God. That whatever he did was in preparation for the glory of Jesus, not for his own glory. Praise the Lord. And you read that in John chapter 3. And towards the end, John says that Jesus must increase, I must decrease. That should be the motive of our hearts. That as we are good stewards of people, in whatever success we gain, or our people gain, our ministries gain, our families gain, our work groups gain, the glory belongs to the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Not to any man, not to any leader, not to any person who is in position, who is a steward of people. Because everything that we are and everything that God has given to us is through Him and Him alone. Let's learn from the example of John the Baptist. And the last and final point that I'd like to make and probably the most important one, as the steward of God's people, we must do our best to see the will of God take place. It's not our will. If we, our senior pastor is here, if he is a senior pastor of this church, it's not his will. It's what God has given the vision for him to do for this church. Because if it was his will, then we would not be where we are today. And we are so thankful that God has given us a good steward who is working in the will of our Father in heaven. How do I know that? Because we have survived 50 plus years in this church. We have been successful. This church has grown from a few people to hundreds of people. This church has grown and, and nurtured hundreds of people who have gone abroad and started new churches. Praise the Lord. And what we are today, it's because our steward has followed the will of the Father, his master. If it was not so, then we would not be here today. This church would have broken and, you know, turned into many disgruntled people and groups of people and things could have happened and this building would not have been here. It is all because he has worked in the will of the Father. As good stewards of people, it's our responsibility that we must ensure that we are walking in the will of our master in heaven. It's not our will. So whenever we are giving directions and making plans, let's do our best to pray, intercede, fast, and seek the will of the Father. So that if we do that, our people will also follow in the will of the Father. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 7, Jesus is saying, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. So as good stewards of people, we must... Learn to follow the will of the Father at the same time lead our people to follow the will of the Father. That is the key to be found in the heaven where God has made a place for us. And one of the most important will of the Father is to go and make disciples. So let's not forget that. We have been talking about this last month where the theme was evangelism. And the greatest commission that Jesus gave to all of us was to go and therefore make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we know this very well. So that's again one of the will of the Father. And that's what the church has been doing uh, through the steward that we have in this church. Winning people for the Lord. Let's keep doing that. Let's keep following in the will of the Lord in everything that we do. So we have learned 10 things that I believe are very important for us as good managers of the people that God has entrusted us with. Knowing and accepting that we are Lord Stewart and not any man. Living above reproach, serving others, leading by example, being faithful and trustworthy till the end. Being a just steward, loving people and doing good for them. Managing our time wisely and not seeking our own glory, but giving all glory to God who deserves it. And doing our best to see the will of the Father is being done through us and to the people that we lead. Shall we all stand? Let's 
dwell on this. As I said at the beginning, no matter whether we have responsibilities or positions or titles, we are managing people in one way or another. And today, I believe that God is teaching us in many ways where we can improve. I know that we all are striving to be, do our best, but there are many areas that we fail in our lives. I know I do. And I shared this morning that yesterday I was at a funeral of, of, a, of a colleague at work. And after the funeral, we were having some tea and there were some discussions going on. And, and the conversations were dwelling around, you know, when will be our time? Because the person who passed away, we didn't expect that person to, to leave so soon. And we were discussing that it could be anyone's time next. We don't know who will be sitting and talking like this in our funerals. And one person said to me, I wonder what they will be saying about me when they come to my funeral and talking like we are doing today. And in my heart, I was thinking to myself, I'm not worried about what people would come and say. I'm more worried about what God will say when I meet him in heaven, when my time comes. Because people will come and say good things and leave. But the person that we are going to spend eternity with, the one who has appointed us as servants in his kingdom, when we report to our master, what will he say? Have we been good and faithful stewards of his kingdom? That's what I would like to hear from him. That's what I want to do in my life as well, that I want to be a good steward of anything little or anything big that God has given me. So that when I see him face to face, then he will say, come, well done. Come, my faithful steward. I do not want to be that person where the Lord will turn his face away and say, I have trusted you with so much. I have given you this responsibility. I have given you these people to look after. And you have not done what you were supposed to do. Let's not be that person. Let's all strive to be good stewards in his kingdom. Just like Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 to 8, he said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. That should be our heart's desire. That when our time comes, when the role is called, we will with confidence say, I have run the race. I have fought the good fight. I have been faithful. I have been trustworthy till the end. And I have served my master well. I have been a good steward in the kingdom of God. Shall we just close our eyes? and dwell on what God has placed in our hearts today. Hallelujah. We praise your name, Lord. Help us, O oh God, that we are able to be a good steward in your kingdom.